Northern Europe, a region long praised as a symbol of sustainable, untouchable wilderness, suddenly found its balance shaken by a tiny creature lurking at the bottom of its lakes. Invasive crayfish quietly burrowed through mud and stone, hollowing out entire ecosystems and wiping out native species without leaving a trace. Every control method failed. Traps, chemicals, and countless interventions all proved useless against an invader this stubborn. Then, in the middle of that stalemate, an idea emerged, one that sounded almost unbelievable, releasing eels into the lakes. These long, shadow-dwelling hunters can trace the scent of crayfish straight into their dens. It was a reckless gamble, doubted by many, yet it became the only real hope to save Northern Europe's once immutable waters. Join Terran Works as we uncover why the humble eel turned out to be the most powerful weapon in the battle against this invasive threat. Let's begin. Estonia, a country woven with dense networks of lakes and rivers, was once considered the natural fortress of the noble crayfish. They were symbols of clean waters, a staple in traditional cuisine, and the silent janitors of the lake bed. Hiding in rocky crevices by day and crawling out at night to forage, quietly maintaining a balance few humans ever noticed. With more than 300 lakes, streams, and channels inhabited by them, Estonia believed it had an ecosystem strong enough to withstand whatever changes might come. From across the ocean, foreign crayfish began to appear, quietly, almost invisibly. In the United States, they were seen as little more than a nuisance. But once they reached Northern Europe, they transformed into a genuine ecological threat. Leading the invasion was the Smokrafsh, the strongest, toughest, and most, most dangerous of them all, carrying a deadly plague wherever it went. Alongside it came the spiny cheek crayfish, the marbled crayfish, and the narrow-clawed crayfish. They didn't cause chaos, they didn't make noise. They simply occupied space, reproduced, and spread like shadows slipping beneath the surface. Estonia took the first hit in 2008, when signal crayfish were discovered in the Musajugi River. Just two years later, they had crawled clear across the country, a rate of spread no one could fully explain. By 2016, five infestation sites had emerged. By 2017, three additional invasive species had officially joined the silent invasion. What frightened scientists most was that no one truly knew how these intruders arrived. Some may have traveled in ballast water from cargo ships, some were aquarium pets released in secret. Others, perhaps, were introduced on purpose, though no one has ever claimed responsibility. Yet regardless of how they came, all paths led to the same outcome. In less than a decade, Northern Europe's once untouchable freshwater systems began to crumble like a fortress left without guards. The noble crayfish, Estonia's pride, suddenly became the first victim shrinking under the pressure of invaders that bred faster, fought harder, and carried diseases capable of wiping out native populations almost entirely. And as their numbers plummeted, it became clear that this ecosystem was facing the greatest crisis in its history. The noble crayfish, once a proud symbol of Estonia's pristine waters, became the very first victim of this silent invasion. They did not lose because they were weak, but because their opponents reproduced faster, fought harder, and carried dangers that Northern Europe's ecosystems had never been built to withstand. In a shockingly short time, the native species shrank under relentless pressure from their foreign rivals, and the decline became so unmistakable that any ecologist could see the entire system slipping into the greatest crisis in its history. This collapse unfolded quietly, the exact way biological disasters often do. Most invasive crayfish entered Estonia through human hands. In the ballast water of ships from aquarium tanks dumped in secret or through irresponsible animal releases. And like every invasive species on Earth, they followed the script evolution had written for them. Occupy, reproduce, and push native life to the brink. 
The noble crayfish once spread across more than 300 lakes, rivers, and streams in 15 counties has now nearly vanished from Estonia's ecological map. What made the disaster even more devastating was the disease they carried. Invasive crayfish brought with them a fungal pathogen known as crayfish plague, a scourge capable of wiping out almost 100% of European crayfish once infected. And the tragedy of it all, the carriers remain unaffected. Signal crayfish thrive, multiply, and roam freely, while even the smallest contact with them can be a death sentence for native species. The disease spreads like fire on dry grass, seeping into streams, lakes, and every corner where the noble crayfish once reigned. As a result, waters that had remained stable for centuries are now more fragile than ever. The disappearance of the noble crayfish is not just the loss of a species, it is the removal of a crucial gear in Estonia's ecological machinery, triggering a cascade of degradation that Northern Europe is now struggling to contain. As the native crayfish declined at alarming speed, Estonian scientists found themselves forced into a race against time. They tested every conservation method known to biology, chemicals, traditional traps, even advanced electrical equipment. Yet each approach, full of hope at the start, collapsed one by one in the face of the invader's stubborn resilience. Chemical treatments proved nearly useless. Signal crayfish prefer fast-flowing waters, where any toxin would be swept away long before it could take effect. Treating still water lakes, though theoretically possible, was rejected by environmental authorities due to the risk of destroying entire microbial communities. Mechanical traps seemed like the simplest solution, but they quickly revealed a fatal flaw. They only captured individuals larger than six centimeters. Smaller crayfish, the most prolific breeders, slipped right through, continuing to expand the population unnoticed. Worse still, the traps harmed unrelated wildlife. Several otters were found drowned in similar devices in Scotland, a warning that Estonian scientists could not ignore. Electrofishing, too, led nowhere. Electrical currents work only on fish swimming in open water, while crayfish hide deep beneath rocks and crevices where the pulses cannot reach. No matter how modern the equipment, it simply couldn't force them out. After a long string of failed trials, Estonia was forced to confront an uncomfortable truth. Every traditional control method was powerless against the invasive crayfish. And that very dead end opened the door to a solution that sounded as if it had stepped straight out of a mad scientific experiment. When every familiar method had collapsed, from chemicals washed away by fast currents to mechanical traps that missed entire generations of young crayfish, one question began to haunt Estonian scientists. Was there any creature in nature that had already evolved to hunt these invaders? And then, buried amid mountains of disappointing data, a faint clue emerged. A native species that had lived hidden in the darkness of lake bottoms for millions of years, a creature humans had almost forgotten, the European eel. Eels are natural ambush predators. They hunt at night, track prey by scent with remarkable precision, and are flexible enough to slip into tight crevices where traps and electric pulses cannot reach. More importantly, they are native to the region, meaning they would not repeat ecological disasters like Australia's infamous cane toad, a lesson the world still shudders at. But intuition wasn't enough. The scientists needed proof. So months of rigorous experimentation began inside aquaculture labs. Large tanks under constant 24-7 camera surveillance, behavior monitoring systems tracking every movement, and batches of live crayfish both marbled crayfish and signal crayfish, introduced to test whether eels could truly hunt them. The results shocked the entire research team. Large-headed eels consumed up to 83% of the crayfish presented. Smaller, weaker eels still reached 33%. And the most crucial discovery of all, eels showed a strong preference for small invasive crayfish under seven centimeters, the exact size class that mechanical traps failed to capture and the very group that reproduced the fastest. In that moment, the researchers realized the faint clue they had once dismissed might be the only lifeline left for Estonia's collapsing freshwater ecosystems. 
When the laboratory results became convincing enough, Estonian scientists decided to step beyond the glass walls of controlled experiments and bring the trial into the real world. In 2024, hundreds of European eels were transported to lakes and flooded quarries, the places under the heaviest pressure from invasive crayfish. There were no ceremonies, no grand announcements. The eels were simply released into the cold water, disappearing into the dark silt below, beginning a mission no other creature could fulfill. This marked the first time Estonia, Estonia had ever deployed a biological control strategy on such a large scale. And it became one of the boldest conservation efforts Europe had attempted in its fight to protect native crayfish. There are still no final results. The ecosystem will need months, perhaps years, to respond. But with their ability to hunt small invasive crayfish, eels are expected to disrupt the most powerful reproductive engine of the invading population. In the darkness of the lake bed, where humans cannot reach, hope now rests on these soft-bodied yet resilient creatures. That they may reclaim the fragile balance Estonia's ecosystems are desperately trying to restore. But Estonia's story is only a small fragment of a much larger picture. What is happening here is not an isolated event. It is an echo of a crisis that has unfolded across Europe for more than a century, where invasive crayfish have not only devastated lakes, but rewritten the continent's natural history. It all began in the 1860s, when a mysterious disease started wiping out Europe's native crayfish. Rivers once teeming with life suddenly fell silent, leaving behind an eerie emptiness. By the 1960s, in an attempt to restore the depleted harvest, humans made a decision that seemed harmless at the time, but would become a catastrophic mistake. Importing the signal crayfish from the United States, completely unaware that it carried the very plague driving European crayfish toward extinction. From there, the tragedy spread like a slow burning fire. Signal crayfish breed rapidly, tolerate pollution, and dig massive burrows that destabilize riverbanks, triggering erosion and increasing the risk of floods. Today, they have spread to 28 European countries, competing with, displacing, and destroying nearly every native crayfish population they encounter. Faced with an invasion moving far too quickly, many nations have been forced to adopt unprecedented measures. Some deploy large-scale trapping programs. Others, like Estonia, experiment with biological control using eels. Switzerland has gone even further, constructing underwater barriers directly into rivers, strange but necessary structures designed to stop invasive crayfish from crawling upstream. Yet every barrier risks blocking the migration routes of native fish, revealing just how complicated this war has become. But regardless of the debates, the obstacles, or the innovations introduced, one truth is undeniable. Invasive crayfish have become one of Europe's most severe ecological crises. And to control them, countries must act together. From restoring eel populations, to designing smarter barriers, to doing the most crucial thing of all, helping the public understand that not all crayfish are the same. That very misunderstanding is what opened the door to today's invasion. Only by revisiting history, acknowledging the mistakes, and committing to the lessons learned can Europe hope to reclaim balance in the waters now under siege. Invasive crayfish may have begun this ecological invasion, but it was humans who set the chain of events in motion. And now, we are also the only hope for setting things right. The eels released into Estonia's waters are just the first step, a small spark in a long journey toward restoring balance to fragile freshwater ecosystems. This battle will not end overnight. It may take years before we know whether the eels can truly restrain the invaders. But one thing remains certain. Nature always finds a way to recover when we choose to stand with it. If today's story has made you rethink what lies beneath the seemingly peaceful surface of our lakes and rivers, share your thoughts and stay with Terran Works, because out there, countless other silent battles are still waiting to be told. See you on the next journey.